Finally, it's deer season. Yeah, we're going to start off in northern Missouri with our very own Tombstone Creek Outfitters on an early season hunt. Casey Bloom kicks it off with a great early season buck. Well, it's September 15th, 2009, opening morning of the Missouri archery deer season. Casey is hunting with John Milliken and is lucky enough to see this awesome deer on the season opener. We have several trail cam pictures of this deer. He is what we call a real hammer. Casey is really hoping that this big guy is going to come a little bit closer as he's about 60 yards away, or at least go towards John, who is not that far away either. For some reason, this hammer smells a rat and decides to make tracks. For the rest of the day, no buck sightings, but several does are loving our biologic food plot. Well, it's now September 16th, day number two of the Missouri archery season. Casey moved his hand up the hill about 100 yards on a different food plot. With plenty of shooting light left, it's unbelievable as this hammer shows up again for the second day in a row. Casey is filming this hunt by himself you can imagine trying to get an arrow into this deer, much less monkeying around with the video camera. Really got a quality organization. 
association put together here. This is real fun. Fun hunting. Fun at, at camp. It's just a lot of fun. And some great deer. Unbelievable deer. They sure aren't like this at home. They're out walking around in the daylight. Unbelievable. Can you believe this? As Casey waits, another good deer shows up. I'm waiting to go see what my blood trail looks like for the deer I just shot. A really nice eight pointer just below me. A Pope of Young Quiet type deer. Really nice. Tall tines. Beautiful. Just gotta wait it out. I don't want to spook him out. I got my good friend John Milliken uh, in a tree stand not far from here, so maybe he can make it down there. It'd be a great deer to kill. Well, shot the deer last night. And I wasn't sure about the shot, and you know, it's just always a good idea. When in doubt, back out. So I waited till dark, went down, didn't find a blood trail, which means I'm guessing I didn't get an exit hole. So I just backed, I, I looked real quick, and just bugged out of there. And now we're gonna go back in there and see if we can pick up the trail and find him. I thought I heard a crash about five minutes after I shot him, which could be consistent with where I hit him. After watching the video, back a little bit, but a good angle forward. So we think we're gonna find him, but. And I was chuckling about my sight. I have two peep sights, two D loops, a shim in the sight. Uh, my son sold my bow. Well, I, I just got back from Alaska and had to give it up. So I had to borrow a bow. I didn't have one. This is actually Paul Korn's bow. It's original truth bow. And I didn't really want to mess it up because it's all set up for him as a spare. So I just tied another peep in and I shoot a little longer. So I put a little D loop on it. And, you know, my motto is everything is adjustable. Well, we're back to the scene of the crime, trying to find Mr. Hammer. Where'd you shoot him at? Right under the tree stand. He, he, initially, so. he disappeared, right? Right out there. there. Yeah, which is only 40 yards from the tree. But there's so much foliage, I couldn't see him. And then it got real quiet. So he, I think he either, well, he either went there. I think I heard the crash down there. But he could have tiptoed anywhere out of here once he, you know, got past the initial shock. He ran a little bit, then it got quiet. So, we just gotta try to find that first spot of blood. Did you find any blood or you just found Didn't find any blood, but I saw this road and I thought, you know, if he turned and came the same way, yeah. there's a lot of sign on here, and I thought, well, maybe this would be an ideal way to run, and you said it was really quiet. Yeah, he like he just me. tiptoed out of there. So I went down here and I was just gonna make this curve, and then there's a little drainage that cuts right down here, a cut. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go and take a look over in that cut because that'd be a great spot for him just to duck down into. Yeah. And then I went over and there's a, a red spot with an antler sticking up there. Looks like this big old massive left beam sticking up there that's all webbed. He's Thank smiling. You. Thank you, John. <laughs> Good man. We, Casey, you, you knew he came this way, didn't you? I, I said it's so typical of any deer, of any animal, to go back to where they were last safe. And he came from this side. I said, I don't want to focus. I, I thought I heard a crash. There's these giant walnuts, like Boone and Crockett walnuts falling. And it sounds like, you know, somebody hanging a tree stand or something. When they hit, it sounds like a crash. So yeah. I said, I don't want to be misled by that and focus over there. I said, we've got to come and circle the side quick. So I, I was pretty sure he'd be laying here. I was Casey, pretty confident. Yeah. the talk is over. I can't wait anymore. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> you betcha. Oh. Nice job. Arrow's still in. Oh my gosh. That is, that is further back than I, than I thought, but it's still... Oh yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh. He's stiff. Well, he was, I'm sure he was down. In, in that he does have the fork brows. He does have that other point we were talking about. That's the deer you videoed. That is a heck of a deer. Wow. How about it, man? How I about it, I think it's a great day. All the way from Arizona to hunt with Tombstone Creek Outfitters. <laughs> and you and I are, you know, you, you and I are working together as a team. We hung this stand yesterday. You know, Paul, our our host, he said, you know, you got to get up on that food pot. You got to try that. And uh, we snuck in here really careful, not wanting to pressure anything. And first day in the stand. I gave you the choice, John. You got to say, say which one you want. You I said, know. I'm going to stay down here. No, That's okay. right. You did the work, by God. You deserved it. Bigger than I thought. How many times has that happened when they're bigger than you thought? That, that doesn't happen. 
I mean, look at the mass. It's just unbelievable. You know, we were saying that that, that right beam wasn't pollinated. <laughs> it's just that the left beam so pollinated yeah. it makes the right beam look normal. Look at that sticker. He's just got junk. You gotta love it when they got junk. You know? Gosh, Casey, that is a really good I've deer. I've never killed a non-typical buck, basic. I don't know, would this be considered non-typical? Yeah. Not so much. Hey, my first official brow t or, uh, drop time. Kind of. Whatever. What a great deal. What a great success. Oh, what fun. You know, I came down here with Paul uh, this summer and helped him, we, we call force in a food plot. This had been logging. It was just a mess from logging. And... Uh, he brought his old Ford tractor and disc, and we worked it up, and we, we just used the old logging holes and made these food plots, and draw the deer in, draw them out of the cover, into the, into where you can get a chance at them. And, wow! And I saw this deer yesterday, or the first morning, the first morning, and he just got weird about 50 yards out. He was coming right at me, and then to get another try at him, that's just that's unheard of. Plus the fact that here we are in September. And these big deer on their feet walking around like nothing's wrong. I guess they've had all summer off and nobody putting pressure on them. You guys did a great job, Paul, of, uh, of implementing the don't go in and spook them, wait on the edges, let them come to you. Don't put pressure on them. It's all about pressure. And uh, how about that? Wow. That is a beautiful deer, that, Casey. He's know, bigger than I thought, too. Way bigger and, uh, and, and this beautiful cape. What a... What a cool animal, and you know, I did get enough videotapes so a guy got to see him on the hoof and see what he looked like. And this is an extra special deer, Paul. Extra special. Wow. A, look at that beautiful face. God, that's a pretty deer. Whew. Wow. Well, well, it's pretty warm out, so we better... Uh, yeah, let's get him taken care of before yeah. the sun gets up on us. God, good job, Casey. Well, like you said, you know, went into out, back out. We didn't have any blood because for whatever reason I didn't get... It looks like this might have angled up and got into the shoulder. And uh, just stop, no exit hole. So no exit hole, no blood trail. But John found him. He knew where to go. So great deal. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate your help on this. No problem. So now the fun starts. Let me I get, love it. Let me get the tag on him, too, because that's yep. one of the things we got to take care of. <laughs> there you go. Attaboy, Paul. And you can get the, deer, the bow in there and all that. The sight. How's that? Can I just get I'll out of this? I'll tell you another thing. If Paul stands over there in the sun, yeah, Paul sun. could block the sun, right? This is a little different than we've got to get him out whole in Wisconsin. And because of where we are, we just cut him in half. And I'm going to take the, the front half. John's going to bring the second half. So we'll get him out of here. But this is a great piece of the work right here, is getting the son of a gun out after this. But.